Arts and crafts? Yes, please. Let's get artsy. My name's Stephanie Zweigart, and welcome to the Ogden Nature Center. We're a 152-acre nature center here in Ogden, Utah, and today we're talking about animals and their colors and patterns that they have. Have you ever wondered why a zebra has black and white stripes? How about the monarch butterfly? Why are they orange and black? Does it have any meaning? Color in nature is a way for animals to communicate. So monarch butterflies are black and orange because they're telling birds and other animals that might eat them that they're poisonous, stay away. A zebra has black and white stripes. It's called disruptive coloration and it allows them when they're in a big herd to kind of throw off where one zebra starts and the other one ends. And that way, if there's a lion or something chasing after them, they don't know what to eat. Today, we're going to meet a special friend. His name's Harry, and he's gonna show us how he uses color and pattern in nature. This is my friend Harry, and he's a great basin gopher snake. Now, he uses colors and patterns in nature as well. Take a look at his coloration and his pattern. Do you see that? It doesn't, maybe doesn't look like much to you right now, but Harry is actually native to here in Utah, and he looks a lot like a friend who's a little bit more dangerous than him. Harry is not a venomous snake. That's why I'm holding him. It's safe for me to do so. But if he was venomous, he would be a Great Basin rattlesnake. They look almost identical, except for a couple key features. The first is no rattle. He also has different eyes. Non-venomous snakes have eyes that are just kind of round pupils. See those? If he was a venomous species, he'd have what I think like to think of as cat eyes. They have little slits in them. Harry is mimicking the rattlesnake, and he does this to protect himself. Think about it. Would you mess with a snake on the trail if it looked like Harry? I wouldn't but he goes even a step further. He actually can take his tail and he will rustle it inside leaves and make a little bit of a rattling sound. And it makes people think that he is a rattlesnake. He's just pretending though. Check out this guy's color patterns. He's a milk snake. His name's Paintbrush, and normally he's a lot more vibrant in color. He's going through what we call a shed. That's basically when the snake is growing, they leave behind their old skin. So you can often find this on the trails or in parks or things like that where there might be snakes. Now the cool thing about the milk snake is they have a little story that they were given their names because farmers found them in barns and they actually thought they were drinking the milk of the cows. They thought they were stealing it. Crazy, right? No, they weren't there for the milk. They were actually getting the rats and the mice that would go into the barn for the seed. And so that's where they got their name, but they have this really cool color pattern. And just like our Great Basin gopher snake, they're a mimicker. They mimic a species of snake called a coral snake. There's a little saying to help us tell the difference between the two. Now, you can see on paintbrush's skin that this is kind of a white color. It's, it's usually yellow when he's really vibrant. And this snake, his white and his black touch, and his red and his black touch, but the red never touches the yellow. Because if you see a snake where red touches yellow, you're a dead fellow. So here's a fun craft that you can do at home that has to do with colors and patterns in nature. There's a few supplies that you need, but they're easy to find. First of all, you need to go on a rock collecting. So collect some rocks. I found a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes. And then you'll need some acrylic paint. If you don't have acrylic paint, um, you can use a permanent marker instead. Some paint brushes, a little dish of water, and then super important to have is an image of the snake that you want to paint or the pattern that you want to paint. I chose this snake right here and he looks very similar to paintbrush. 
This one has a different pattern. His pattern is red, yellow, black, yellow, red, yellow. And that's red touches yellow, you're a dead fellow. This is a coral snake, and coral snakes are venomous. You wanna stay away from them. So I'm going to paint the coral snake today, and the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is arrange your rocks kind of in a snake pattern, just so you can see what you're gonna paint where. Let's see. And if you move it a little bit, that's okay. You don't need, doesn't need to be perfect. And I think I wanna use that one as my tail. So there we are, I've created my little snake here. And then I can begin the painting process. This is where you need your picture. You wanna make sure you can see those patterns really well. And on the head of my snake, it starts out black. Okay, so my next color will be yellow. Here we go, and I might need to do one or two layers on my yellow color. Uh, you can always go back through if it's a nice hot day like it is today these colors will dry pretty fast. And I'm just gonna keep following the pattern of my snake. And because it's a venomous coral snake, red touches yellow. It's okay if your colors mix a little bit like mine. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just supposed to be fun. When you move on to the next rock, you just start and make sure you have the right color pattern. So the next rock will start with black. So you can start to see my snake is appearing. So here's my finished snake rock painting. It's pretty cool, right? This is a coral snake. I wouldn't touch this one if I were you. Well, this one's okay. So when you're done painting and it dries out, you can go into your garden or a local trail and set up your snake for people to enjoy. Have fun. Thanks for joining us here at the Ogden Nature Center.